One of the most important features of Pina is its modular stores. If you worked with Vuex, you might remember that we had one root store file and modules that broke off from that. Pina, on the other hand, is modular by design. We create stores devoted to each major logical concern of our app and then import those stores where they're needed. But it's not always straightforward to determine how to break up that logic into stores. So how do we go about organizing our stores? In other words, how do we handle store organization? Let's look at our example project to see a straightforward example and compare that against one that's a bit more nuanced. In our example project, a user can register an account, and the user interface will change depending on if a user is logged in showing their name and their favorites in the navbar. To achieve this authentication behavior, we need to keep track of the user's state and of the actions related to that. Register, log in, log out. So it looks like this could all be grouped into an authentication store. Like I said, super straightforward. But now let's look at some less obvious store organization. Looking at the functionality of our restaurants app, there's a search bar with two inputs. The first input takes in a city location. The second input takes in a search term to find related restaurants. Both inputs have event listeners that trigger a function when the user types in text. Each function makes a call to the Google Maps API. City calls for the latitude and longitude of the location typed in by the user. Search takes in a term and calls for relevant restaurants within a certain proximity of the city. In other words, both the city and search inputs are utilizing location from the Google Maps API. So should they be combined within the same store? A Google Maps store, perhaps? Well, there are quite a few actions in this project that rely on the Google Maps API, so that's a lot of code in just one store. And more importantly, the actions aren't all related to the same logical concerns. To get clearer on how this should be store organized, we could break it down to focus more on what is the Google Maps API being used for? What state do we need to track? When we ask those questions, we know that the first input is being used to make geolocation requests, while the second is dealing with restaurants that match the search term. Based on this reasoning, it sounds like we can make two stores with their own individual logical concerns. Geolocation.js, restaurants.js. But wait a minute. In the restaurant store, when we request that list of relevant restaurants, it requires the use of geolocation data. This means we need to use data from the geolocation store in the restaurant store. You might be wondering if this ruins our approach to creating those separate stores. But no, it doesn't have to. This is what we call nested stores, where we can simply import the geolocation store into our restaurant store to access the bits of it that we need here. An important detail to remember about nested stores is that the way we share data Actions and getters between stores will depend on the type of store, options versus setup. In a setup store, we can import and call the useStore function at the top of the setup function. Alternatively, in an options store, we'll need to import and call the useStore function within the action or getter where we are accessing that store. And with that, we've come to the end of the lesson. And the key takeaways are, group related data into their own stores by logical concern. We can also organize stores by features within our app. Do not assume a store should be created around one API or library. We can share state, actions, and getters via nested stores. In the next lesson, we'll learn about accessing our Pina state. Welcome to View Mastery's Proven Pina Patterns course, where we'll explore the pro-level patterns you'll want to know when using View's state management library in production. We'll look at best practices for using Pina in your apps and apply them to common scenarios. If you haven't learned the basics of Pina yet, you'll first want to check out my other course here on View Mastery, Pina Fundamentals. Compared to state management libraries of the past, Pina is a tool that is lighter weight, more modular, less prescriptive, and enables more freedom. And as the saying goes, with great freedom comes great responsibility. The fact that we now have more options for how to conduct state management in our apps could ultimately lead to failure, where we have a project packed full of anti-patterns that we soon regret. 
or it could lead to excellence, where we've elegantly architected our app to service for years to come. Throughout the course, we'll be covering the following topics. Organizing our Pina stores. Options versus setup stores. Accessing and updating state and unique Pina features such as patch, reset, and plugins. And to apply these concepts, we'll be using an example app. Let's take a look at that now. As you can see, it's a restaurant finder. Type in the city and search term to find restaurants within a certain area. The user can register an account so they can save their favorites, and they can read information pulled from the Google Maps API, such as ratings and reviews. This app tracks its global state for each logical concern within its own Pina store which we'll cover throughout this course. Now that we have a better idea of where we're headed, let's take a minute to talk about why we would even choose to use Pina when Vue 3's Composition API has a powerful reactivity system with flexibility for sharing state. So if you've been wondering when exactly Pina is necessary, I'll address that in the next lesson. See you there.